So welcome everybody. I'm going to be really fast through this because we don't have very long. But basically, me, Lohan, and a few others within Open Mind, and other than that, I've been you know messing around for a while with Akapai and really trying to find out you know how we can get to a place where we're experimenting with it without having to go through all this messy configuration and. You know, we want to build things. We don't want to have to worry about like setting up the system and, and you know debugging loads of weird errors. So we created a Jupyter notebook playground essentially, and what it allows you to do is you know spin up any amount of actors within a system and design business business logic to develop how they to how they interact. Right. So like here we have Alice and Bob, typical. But you could, you know, create any number of actors specific to a domain, and then write business logic that, you know, designs a set of issuers, verifiers, all that kind of stuff, right? And I'm just going to whiz through this basically. But you know, there's this code base here, which is really a abstraction. There's just a simple, you know, you can clone it, and then you have this playground, is what we call it. Uh, so I'm going to stop sharing this screen now and try to share the actual code. Find it. Okay, so this is you know the repo cloned, downloaded. Um, and essentially what we have here, right, is the basic structure of this is you have a Docker Compose file and a managed script. And the managed script is how you start the Docker Compose. So it defines the containers that you want to start. And obviously, these containers need to be defined in your Docker Compose file. And then in your Docker Compose file, you can specify a bunch of uh, services which for each actor. So each actor will typically have three or four services. So they have a wallet. We use Postgres. Uh, they have ngrok, um, which will expose your agent to the public network. Uh, they have the actual agent, which just uses a Docker file from the Hyperledger of Ares. Akapai folks, and then business logic. Uh, and the business logic is the bit that spins up a playground for you, like a notebook service section. Um, and that's essentially it. And then you have this playground folder, right? And the playground folder is where you actually write your business logic, or well, where your business logic is persisted, right? So each actor will have a folder. And within that folder, there'll be an environment file. And this is really cool, right? This is where you can specify all the config for your agent. So, you know, like any ports that you need to define, any sort of like variables you want to define, like your label. Um, so like this just identifies your agent, you know, like any seed that you want to set. Basically everything that you can pass into Akapai, you can specify it in here. Um, it's really cool, really easy to configure. And then you have this notebox folder, which is actually where you write your business logic. So now we're quickly going to go into that. So basically, to spin up this thing, you know, you clone it. You have to do some config. We're not going to go over that now, but there is a video that you can just watch. So if you're interested in getting this spun up, uh, you should be able to do it in less than 20 minutes. Um, so I've already got this running locally. Um, you know, there's there's two services. I can just type Docker PS. It will show all these services that are running on my machine. Uh, and then what you want to do is to get the actual URLs. Just type dot slash scripts to get URLs. This is going to spit out a, a couple of URLs to some basically Jupyter notebooks, right? With a token to actually access that notebook. Um, so now I'm going to go into that. Stop sharing again. Stop sharing. So. Just to say, like what we want to get you to today, hopefully, or at least to get you close and you know motivated to continue doing this, is we would hope that you you get to this stage, right, where you have an agent running on some public IP uh, that is accessible on the internet, so that we can connect together, right, and we can maybe start sending messages. We can write some custom code, and you know we can see what happens when people have agents and start to interact. But for now, I'm going to show you these two agents, which I'm running on my local machine, right? So there's one agent here, which is for the Hyperledger Global Forum. Uh, and we're going to initialize this agent on the Sovereign Staging Network. So I should say we've written this code ourselves, the Aries Agent Controller. All it's basically doing is providing an interface for us to send Swagger requests to the Akapai interface and receive webhooks from them. So you know we're basically saying, okay, we're going to post our API request to this endpoint here, and you know it has an API key. Um, 
and then we're just going to hit run some functions. And you can actually have a look. Like if you want to uh, see what the code is, you can go help. It just put, put, puts out like what the methods you can access, basically. Uh, and so what we're going to do in this notebook here is we're, we're creating a public did, and we're going to actually write it to the sovereign staging network. I mean, I feel a bit bad because we've been spamming the sovereign staging network a little bit, but I think it's OK. And it's quite nice to have it on the staging net as opposed to a public network. But I should say it's very easy to configure this uh, playground to use a local network. Uh, it's just setting some config in the uh, environment variables. And we're going to use this scheme, which I've already written to the ledger. I'm going to write a credential definition, right? So this is our public key that we can use to sign statements as this agent that we've just spun up issuing these schemas. And then what, what we do here is we like just print out these, def these identifiers, and then we copy them across to like a new notebook where we're actually going to issue them. And the reason for that is because this is Docker, right? So if we do dot slash manage stop, we're going to stop these services, but we actually persist the state. It's taking quite a while. Um, yeah, maybe I should have done this before. Hmm. Okay, I don't know why this is taking so long. Oh no, there we go. Just generating the key, you know, it takes long. That's why we've got to move to BBS plus, I suppose. Okay. Um, oh, and then so the other thing that you need to do, so every one of these notebook instances, you'll have to terminate the controllers just so it's not like taking up the port and like creating a client session, I think. So here we're actually gonna, uh, you know, use the agent control. We spin up a webhook server. We paste in our new identifiers. Uh, and I'm gonna create a multi-use invitation. If anybody has a, um, wallet, a mobile wallet that points to the something staging network, feel free to you know scan this QR code I'm going to print out in a second. And this is basically the logic, right? So these connection handlers, the, the agent receives a message, uh, at, sends it through the webhook to our agent controller, and we just register some listeners and handlers for those events that we're interested in you know, performing functionality on. So basically, what's going to happen is when this connection goes to active, we're going to offer you a, a credential. Very simple. So yeah, we register these listeners. Okay. So like, what typically would happen, right? If I wanted to do this with myself, you know, and I'm trying to design a flow, I could just copy this invitation across to, like, my uh, demo participant agent, right? And I could paste it in into this this thing, you know, like down here. We go somewhere down here, and we just paste in the invitation. But we can also display it as a QR code. I have tried this, and I hope it's going to work. Has anyone got a mobile phone? It's a shame I can't hear you, because it would be nice. But if people scan this, we'll be able to see the interaction, right? It should print out some stuff. I'll also do it, in case nobody has one. OK, cool. Yeah, and so basically, this is just some output that we print, right? Like, you know, as many people as you want, we just you know, receiving webhooks, and then we're doing some functionality. And, and what we're doing is we're offering you a credential. Uh, and your participant name is going to be the name of, uh, yeah, your phone. So like, this is Lohan's iPhone. Cool. I guess just Lohan did it. Uh, this should be like scannable by anybody. So you know, we'll leave that for a few more minutes um, if anybody's interested. And then, so we've got five minutes. OK, that's not too bad. Uh, and then the next thing that I really want to get onto is looking at how you would use this yourself, right? So like I, I, I've been using this for a while now, and every time I use it, it kind of get a bit bit better at using it. And and what typically was happening is I was just copying and pasting code all over the place. So what I've created here is like some recipes, right? And and you can just, you know, say you want to design a flow, you want an issuer and a verifier. So you typically go to the issue credential protocol. You know, and like as the issuer, I'd copy these two templates, right? We have the initialization and then the issuance. We could just copy them, and I wouldn't put them in the recipes folder. But if you come back to your root folder, this is like your agent's code, right? Like you're testing out. So you can paste them in here, and then you've got two easy templates. You can just easily, you know, go down, customize whatever you want, right? Like you want to define some schema, you want to set some attributes. You know, it's, it's designed in a way that, oh, you know, anything in these brackets you need to change. But it's really simple to get up and running, and, and like. You know, design a complicated system, right? Oh, don't want to do that. Uh, and then 
so yeah, there's loads of recipes, definitely worth checking out because it's just like, here's easy, how do I get started? How do I do stuff? Like, so we have issuance, creating connection, we have mediation and present proof. At well, some point we will move uh, multi-tenancy in here, but it's just been like a process of refactoring at the moment. And then the thing that's cool that we want to do today, which would be great if you guys can, uh, you know, get set up with one of these and have them accessible on the public network, because I've created a couple of like libraries, I call them. I mean, they're very rough and ready pieces of code, right? But uh, essentially, these are like things that you can import into your notebook and you know do a bit more complicated functionality without needing to implement uh, it all in notebook cells. So you know, we have this thing called a messaging service, which is going to allow you to you know you pass in your agent controller, and then we can make connections using the messaging service, and we can you know just send messages to each other. We can print out our inbox, all that kind of stuff. So. I think me and Lohan already created a message. I'll just show you that first. So yeah, I mean, there's just some code, right? Like, so we create an invitation. Um, so this is like Lohan's connection identifier. And then I'm just saying, okay, like, let's see what messages Lohan sent me. Uh, you know, and it's, it's like that. It's, I mean, it's very much a gimmick, but the idea is because we're all working in notebooks, right? Like. If anybody here is motivated to like write their own service or you know like extend the service in any way, write their own code, definitely it's a hundred percent possible, right? Um, so there's that, right? It would be good to like I can send Lohan another message. Oh, Lohan's just sent me a message. So you know it's cool because we're not on the same machine anymore, right? I'm on some machine on some IP somewhere. Right, and I've actually not used Ngrok anymore. We're exposing the agent's HTTP port to the public network, and you know we're interacting together. So another cool thing that we've done is this thing called the authentication service. So like again, like I just implemented this. I'm just going to terminate the controller. Oh, so there's this as well, like because 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 this is just in local, you know, it's just in local storage. Uh, it's not going to save. So I'm going to try this. You know, so we don't now save this to a file. So in future, like if I wanted to get back my contacts and like come back into this notebook, I'd have to load from file and, and just get all these messages back. Um, minor thing. But yeah, in the authentication service, the idea is, you know, it's a similar process. We're just importing some class that I've written, and what we're going to do is we define a presentation request. And we're creating an invitation, right? And we're saying, okay, for this invite, I'm going to challenge them once they accept my invitation to present this proof, right? And again, you know, we can display this as a QR code. And Lohan, I guess you got your credentials, so maybe you could scan this QR code too, and you can present, you know, like pass the authentication service. And you can imagine putting this on a website, or basically, the idea of this playground is is it's, it's really simple to start experimenting with what's possible, so that eventually, you know, when you get a bit more comfortable. Firstly, you know, you can try out some cool ideas, which wouldn't, you know, like would take you a lot longer to do, um, if if you were did not work well. Okay, yeah, cool, yeah. So it would take you a lot longer to do this, you know, if you were having to start from scratch and you were trying to find find a front end for all this stuff. You know, it gets complicated, and you know, it would be better to like first do all the flows kind of get like, okay, what's going on here? And then you can just pick like one actor and say, okay, right, I want to divide, develop a front end for that actor, right? Uh, you know, I want to take this messaging service that I've created, right? And I want to spin up a front end so we can actually see messages in a nice interface, right? It's just, it's kind of like slicing the pie a little bit nicer so that I don't think you've responded to me. You didn't pass the authentication service, I don't think that. No. No, I didn't yet. We have one minute, by the way. Well, okay, one minute. That's fine. Did you did you respond? Because yeah, so there's one minute, right? Like, and I don't want to go into this anymore. Like, definitely, I'll be around all conference. So if you're interested in this, it's totally worth uh, having a look. The main thing that I would say is, you know, if people don't want to spin this up, we could send you some URLs, and you know, you could actually just play around with this yourself. Um, and then the other thing that is definitely I would recommend is watching this YouTube video, which just takes you through the process by which you can. Um, you can set up one of these agents, right? And like, go. It takes like I think it's like fifteen minutes long, so it's a bit of a time. Not massive, right? And and you can hopefully, you know, if you send it up, and we have a channel on the Hyperledger Global Forum, it's like hashtag on the Rocket Channel, hashtag Aries Dash Playground. 
So if you put in a connection invitation in there, we'll definitely at least you know make a, a connection with you and, and send you a message. And I think it's quite cool just to see it, you know. So I think that's it, right? It was a bit fast and it was hard to get through it all, but hopefully uh, that's interesting. Yeah, you can do proof of non-replication. Cool. Thanks a lot.